On this week's episode of VTV, we hear about a special art project our students did to brighten the day of some well-deserved kids. We also learn about the significance of those plaques hanging on the main hallway that we walk by every day. We hear from Triton legend Quentin Callawar about his recent album release concert. And we watch the pilot episode of a new talk show that's destined to make late afternoon TV history. Today is Friday, April 10th, and you're watching VTV. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bonnie. And I'm Sarah. It's hard for us to believe, living in the U.S. in the 21st century, that there are still places in the world where children have so few belongings and come from such challenging situations that they literally have no special memories of their childhood. Triton Arts students hope to fix that problem by teaming up with a nonprofit organization to deliver hand-drawn portraits to some deserving kids that they hope will bring a smile to their faces. My attraction to this project was to raise some awareness and do something kind for a group of kids who could probably use a little extra kindness in their life. We are very fortunate where we live here and don't have to deal with some things like gun violence every day, just going out to a playground or going for a walk but there are places where that's an everyday occurrence for children in this country. We are assigned a kid and um, we're supposed to uh, draw them with uh, any medium that we wanted to pick. Right here we have Desiree, she's 10 years old and she likes pink. So as an artist you might think, all right, I might incorporate pink into that, either her shirt or her background. So this project happens all over the world with refugee camps, orphanages, and then in the U.S. they work with children in high poverty, high violence situations. Some of these kids might not have a picture of themselves at all other than pictures taken by schools or institutions. They don't have family pictures, they might not have families at home. So this is something that was done just for them to make them feel special and feel like somebody really cares about them. I hope they're like happy about like seeing themselves on a picture made by someone that made it for them. I hope they like, yeah. Most of these kids are younger, so what they love seeing most is their true resemblance in the portraits. Getting, getting the facial features correct, getting, you know, the, making sure the eyes are the right size and the nose is in the right place is really challenging. Dealing with mixing up skin tones, a lot of this, um, a lot of my students have been painting for the first time for this project or working with blending colored pencils, which can be really challenging. One of the hardest things was trying to blend out uh, the shading, but I think um, I kind of like how you can kind of see the different layers. I think it kind of looks a little more stylized, so I'm going to mat it. Um, and then um, I believe that we just, we can write a little note if we want to, and then it gets uh, shipped off. I 
I'm very proud of how they have engaged and persisted with this project and really put a lot of effort in. Would you do something like this again? Most likely. Yeah, I probably would. I like to make people happy with my art. All of us walk down the main hallway of our school multiple times each day and pass by a bunch of plaques hanging on the wall that commemorate major events in our nation's history. I wonder how many of us have ever taken the time to stop and look at any of them. Members of the Freedom Exchange of Greater Newburyport visited our school recently to present Triton with a few more additions to the shrine. VTV was there for the presentation. Okay, well we're happy to be here today, the Exchange Club of Greater Newburyport. Uh, we're here to present a Freedom Shrine, which is a collection of American documents intended to inspire the American spirit. Uh, we presented this original shrine in 1985 on the 350th anniversary of the town of Newberry. Some of these are very familiar, the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation or uh, the Gettysburg Address. Others are more obscure, uh, such as General McAuliffe's reaction to the German uh, commander asking for uh, surrender during the Battle of the Bulge, and it was a one-word document, so to speak. He said, nuts, and you capital N-U-T-S apostrophe, he, that they weren't going to surrender. And we're here to present four plaques today. The first one is the um, account of the trial of Susan B. Anthony, who was the, one of the original suffragettes. Uh, she was arrested for voting in New York State, and it was illegal for women to vote at the time. She went to trial, which was somewhat of a a uh, controversial trial and that the judge gave a directed verdict of guilty and the jury never got to hear the the story. She was fined and then you might guess what happened. She refused to pay the fine so the fight continued and that eventually led to the um, 19th amendment which is the uh, right for women to vote. Two of the more modern uh, plaques are uh, from the 1960s, Martin Luther King's I Had a Dream, and it's promoting racial equality. It was given on the, the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. And then, of course, uh, shortly before that, JFK's uh, Ask Not What Your Country Can Do For You, Ask What You Can Do For Your Country, in his inaugural address. So we hope that you folks will take a look at these documents, that they have some meaning to you. It's our gift to Triton and then we hope it promotes the American spirit, which is what we hope for when we present these Freedom Shrines. Thank you very much um, on behalf of Triton High School. We are honored that you have selected Triton High School to be recipients um, of this. We are aware that not every school is chosen and not every organization has this great representation. Um, and we feel very, very honored and express our deep gratitude for you for continuing to include us and, and give us the opportunity to, to share these with the school community. So thank you again very much. Thank you. I didn't know much about it, to be honest. I didn't really look at it like coming in through the high school. I didn't really know what it was. Kind of just looked past it. But after the presentation today, I really like got a better understanding of what it was, and I think it's like really important for students to know about it. Well, I think it's like a lot of very important documents and things from U.S. history, and it's definitely important for students to know about the history of our country. Triton senior Quentin Callower is a legend around these parts because he's an amazing guitar player and an even better person. 
Quinton recently performed a concert at the school to celebrate the release of his first album. Ben Janvren met up with him to find out more. As many of you know, Triton senior Quinton Calloway recently released an album. I was able to get the chance to chat with him about this big milestone in his musical career. Well, the name of the album is just Quentin Calloway. It's a self-titled album, and also I don't think there are any other albums called Quentin Calloway. Um, the inspiration for it, um, it actually came about kind of accidentally. Um, I came into contact with John Butcher, um, who had just kind of seen me around, and he wanted to get into the studio to record a couple of tracks. And um, we liked it so much just from doing two songs that we kind of wanted to do a, a whole album, um, and he wanted to produce it. So it really, uh, I don't know, it wasn't really inspired by anything, it just kind of came about. Well, the, the process of the album was uh, its quite long. Um, as I said, we kind of just came into it not really knowing um, what it was going to be in the end. So I came in with one original tune and uh, one cover tune. And it was kind of a learning experience for me because I would write the song and then, you know, be recording that song while I was writing the next song for the album. So it, was, it kind of was like staggered that way, which made it kind of uh, take a little bit longer, but it was my first time, so, uh, you know, it doesn't bother me. Well, um, I think the one that, uh, the song that I think is the best, um, the, the most well-written is Water Music in D Major, which is the, the second, second, I think, track on the album. Um, I like that one particularly because it fuses a, so, kind, of, kind of a lot of different things. Um, it was also one of the first ones I wrote for the album, so it, it starts with a more uh, contemporary fingerstyle part, but kind of weaves its way into a classical section and then back. Um, I decided to um, publish the record um, independently, so actually I created a company to, to hold the rights to all my songs and to publish it. And so I created Sunbird Records to, uh, to make sure everything was protected and make sure it was put out the, the right way. So um, with that publication process came you know, all the, the, the technical, uh, the, the legal technicalities of creating a company and making sure that everything's, <laughs> everything's got the right copyright on it and, and uh, a, lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff came afterward. And if I could do one thing differently, I would um, make sure I had all the songs written <laughs> before I actually went in to record it. Um, because the way we did it, it was fine because it was the first time I, I did it, but um, that way it took about a year to get everything recorded. Um, but I think if I had just had everything laid out, um, you know, had everything written, had everything arranged, I could have recorded it in a few days, you know, been done with it then. But again, it's a learning process. The message of the album, I don't know if it really has a, a coherent message or anything, but I think uh, one thing that I want listeners to take away from it is um, that artists can, um, or that all these different kinds of music can coexist in one place. So, I mean, you'll, you'll notice if you listen to the album, there's a whole lot of different styles. There's, you know, just fingerstyle instrumental pieces. There's, you know, kind of more straightforward 60s rock pieces. There's swing. There's, uh, you know, almost more folk-oriented. So I, I think it's just... The message, if you can call it that, is just that all these things can can coexist in one place and hopefully work well together. What advice, uh, I don't know, advice I'd give to people uh, seeking to put their music out. I mean, I'm still one of the people who are trying to make it happen, but really what it comes down to is how much work you put into it and how dedicated you are to it. There's nothing that can replace just putting the hours in, you know, and um, taking every opportunity you can to play a show talking to every person you can just to, to meet people, make connections, all that sort of stuff. Just put yourself out there as much as you can and make it happen. First there was Jimmy Fallon, Ellen, and Stephen Colbert. Now there's a new kid on the block making his mark on the talk show circuit. Ryan Ladding is a Triton junior who hopes to entertain his wildly expanding audience with his quick wit and dry humor in this, the pilot episode of his new show, Late Afternoon with Ryan Ladding. Enjoy! Hello, 
This is Late Afternoon with Ryan Laddig. Today we are airing the first episode of Late Afternoon with Ryan Laddig, obviously. With my special guest today is David Jackson, because we're going to start the bar low. How you doing? And we're going to be asking him a few questions to really get to know who Lockdown Dave, or as we all know him as, David Jackson really is. So, let's get started. David, where did this whole Lockdown Dave 16 persona start? So, the original uh, name Lockdown Dave uh, I was down at uh, Salisbury Elementary. They have like a basketball court there. Really? I yeah, I was playing with some of my uh, friends and uh, this kid named Matt Pike showed up. He's like, yo, play some defense, you bum. And back then I just sucked at basketball, you know? Like today. So anyway, um, I was actually upset. I wasn't like, really? you know, like emotional upset. Like I was pissed. I and um, You're angry. Yeah, angry. And really? I got five steals. He's like, damn, Dave, I'm going to have to call you Lockdown Dave from now on. So, yeah, I got nine steals. And so why isn't it Lockdown Dave 9? What do you mean 9? It's Lockdown Dave 16. Yeah, it's 16 because I was 16 at the time. Oh, really? Yeah. You were at Salisbury Elementary School and you were 16? That explains a lot. So, <laughs> let's get on to some other things. So, David, our football team, as you know, there's some big guys on there. Yep. They probably get thirsty a lot. Would you ever consider being their water boy? Gatorade boy, my mistake. Would you ever be their Gatorade boy? No, they're going to need probably like maybe even a kilo of Gatorade if they're going to have a, a chance kilo. of winning a game. Yeah, like a kilo. Some, get some gills in there? Yeah, dude. Gills of Gatorade. Kilos is way deep when you get <laughs> 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 All right. So, David, the champion mm. sweatshirt you're wearing today, is that a real champion sweatshirt? All I'm going to say is this. This thing was cheap. I paid five bucks. That's all I'm going to say. Now that's a steal. So, David, what's your... Uh, I heard you um do a... What's it called? Twitch? Yeah, Twitch. Twitch? What do you, what's Twitch? Uh, Twitch is a uh, live stream platform where you play games. Play games? What type of games do you play on this Twitch? Uh, I play Call of Duty and uh, some uh, NBA 2K. Really? Yeah. So, what, do you stream your games? Yeah. What is the? Uh, what would you say your average view count is? One. One? Yeah. Wow. Get a pro, <laughs> pro Twitch player here. <laughs> wow. It's, it's, it's actually really 12, I'm not going to lie, but I mean, I said one for a good reason. So we got one to 12, and what is the age gap in here? Um, Five, six-year-olds? Hopefully not that, you know, I had some, you know, 19-year-olds watching, but really? hopefully nothing underage, because then, you know, parents are going to be commenting, why are you swearing really? in front of my kid? Then I'll be like, yeah, why are you letting your kid watch Twitch when it's rated 18? Damn. Well, we'll have to set up a map. <laughs> Do you <laughs> mind? I am trying to host a talk show here. Ooh. Yeah, that's our executive, uh, our executive I, producer. I, All right, well, here on our new TV show, we're going to have a guest system, as you see. It's not always going to be David. We're going to have different people coming on. And I was thinking I could always pick their guests, or maybe you guys could. Or maybe I can. I don't think that's a very likely. Go ahead, leave. Audio guy, audio guy, help audio me guy, out. Audio guy, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm out of here. All right, down the shot. So, <laughs> this show is going to be based on like a, can we get security here? David, let's go. Get him out. Let's go. Fine, fine. Let's go. Fine. I'm trying to explain the show. I'm, going, I'm, going. I'm going. trying to explain the show. As I was trying to say multiple times, this show, we want you, the kids of Triton, or the staff, whatever you want, to tell me who to interview. Anyone you want. I don't care. Mr. Forget, are you willing to come on? We'd love to have you on the show some night. Maybe not the second or third episode. <laughs> okay, okay, bro. Okay, bro. Sorry about that. All right, well, I think that's I think that's all we have time for today. Thank you very nice. <laughs> Give it. Up. Thank you for watching our show this afternoon. <sighs> Did you kill a sheep? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you very much for having us. Oh my God, for the love. Thank you for watching us this afternoon. <sighs> okay, ready? I'm gonna do it this time. Thank you for watching late night. <sighs> Thank you for watching late night. With oh my God! Right. That's the end of the show for tonight. This one probably wasn't gonna be that good. Have a great rest of your afternoon. Is, is it over? <laughs> Thanks for being a part of our wildly expanding audience. We hope you enjoyed this episode of VTB. I'm Bonnie and I'm Sarah. See you next time even though you won't because I'm not in this class. Shout out to D period math with Miss Jones. <laughs> Everybody fix their hair ready to go? I think so. Get out of here, I'm the center of attention.
multiple times each day and pass by a bunch of plaques hanging on the wall that commemorate commemorate that commemorate a bunch of plaques hanging on the wall that commemorate 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 sorry i screwed that up really bad <laughs> oh i wonder how many of us have ever taken the time to stop and look at any of them none of us first there was jimmy fallon ellen and stephen colbert <laughs> I illegally on the grass she doesn't pay for parking ever foot five <laughs> <laughs>